The bunkers of Albania have to be one of the most fascinating yet haunting sites within the country. It's strange, the longer you spend in the country, the more used to seeing them you are. However, when you dig deeper into the history of the bunkers themselves, you learn about the paranoia of Albania's communist leader Enver Hoxha, who ruled the country not really that long ago, from 1941 until his death in 1985. The abandoned bunkers serve as a reminder of Hoxha's 44-year rule, and for many Albanians, the isolation and poverty that was faced. In this video, I'll discuss the intended purpose of these 173,000 bunkers scattered across Albania, as as well as bring you around areas within Tirana where this communist history is still very visible. Since I'm a foreigner living here in Albania, I obviously did not experience the communist regime, nor did my parents or grandparents, so I really can't comprehend it. Therefore, I want to make this video as research-based as possible. Also, if you want to add any facts or opinions about the bunkers or Albania's communist era, you can just leave them in the comments below. Okay, let's get started. Although there are bunkers all over Albania, I actually don't have that much footage. So I decided to take my camera out this morning to show you some examples of bunkers scattered around the city. While doing so, I'll discuss the history and purpose of them. As I mentioned, Enver Hoxha was Albania's leader during the communist regime. He ruled from 1941 until 1985, and communism eventually fell in 1992. Here, I'm entering Bunkar 2, one of two bunkers that has been turned into a museum just a few years ago. During Hoxha's rule, Albanian society became very closed off to what he perceived as potential threats. I can't really go in depth into each of Hoxha's perceived threats in one video, but due to a variety of reasons, Hoxha was concerned about the intentions of many countries during the 1960s to 1980s. For example, Hoxha had a fallout with the Soviet Union and afterwards withdrew Albania from the Warsaw Pact in 1968. He also had a fallout with China after America's President Nixon visited China in 1972. Hoxha was also fearful of Tito's ambitions with Yugoslavia, fearing that they planned on taking over Albania. He was also disapproving of their hostile treatment of ethnic Albanians in Kosovo. In 1973, Hoxha also began to further strengthen repressive measures due to the fear of his rule being threatened. So in summary, Hoxha had a lot of perceived threats to Albanian society and his rule, and his response was to try to protect the country and his rule at all costs. The bunkerization program began in 1965 and lasted until Hoxha's death in 1985. The plan was a result of Hoxha's vision of a possible two-front war, a possible attack mounted by Yugoslavia and either NATO or the Warsaw Pact. Hoxha once said, quote, if we slackened our vigilance even for a moment or toned down our struggle against our enemies in the least, they would strike immediately like the snake that bites you and injects its poison before you are aware of it." Unquote. The bunkerization program was quite expensive, especially for what was already a weak economy. Due to the program, funds were diverted from things like improving basic infrastructure. Many of the bunkers still exist, however, some have been removed particularly in cities. They have also been reused for things like storehouses, art exhibits, and museums. It's also been said that, despite their intended use, some bunkers were used during the Albanian insurrection in 1997, and also by Kosovo Albanian refugees as temporary shelters in Kukas during the Kosovo War in 1999. Similar to the pyramid, the bunkers are a symbol of Hoxha and this period. For myself, I sort of got used to seeing them around, but I've always been curious about the perceptions of those who had actually experienced the bunkerization program during the 1970s and 80s. I guess to them, probably the memories are very vivid. Anyways, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Personally, I learned a lot from researching the topic of this video and from visiting Bunk Art 2. I would 100% recommend visiting this museum if you're in Tirana. And I've also heard that Bunk Art 1 is a very interesting museum as well. Okay, that is all. I will see you in the next video. Bye.